Okay, YouTubers, today I want to talk about unforgiveness or forgiveness in relation to unforgiveness. So in this video, I want to talk to you about what unforgiveness actually is. Uh, a lot of people will be in unforgiveness towards people and they will think to themselves, I don't, I don't have any unforgiveness problem with this particular person. Let me give you a few examples. Uh, growing up as a, as a young person, uh, I was very shy, very introverted, didn't really talk to anyone. I was quite moody, quite morose, and I was quite probably quite difficult to have around, to be fair. Um, I, I was quite, yeah, I was quite difficult. Anyway, when I was 14, uh, there was a young girl in the youth group who joined my school, and um, she was part of our church youth group, and she joined my school a year above me. And when I was 14, I got involved in the wrong crowd. I was, um, well, I, I tried smoking, and um, I got involved with a few people I shouldn't do, and uh, they weren't very respectful, and so and so forth. And, um, yeah, they, they, they weren't always very nice. And um, the problem was, of course... I was going to church at the time and um, sort of doing the church thing, being a hypocrite, raising my hands to God and all at the same time being off the rails outside of church. So I wasn't in a very good place at the time and wasn't really acknowledging my sin, as it were. So at the time, this young girl was going to school and I had a friend who lived local We'll call him Steve. It's not his real name, but let's call him Steve. And Steve had a brother called Ryan. Again, not his real name. So me and Steve would often walk to school together and we would, uh, you know, be quite reasonably good friends. I think I was friends with Steve because if I, if I knew if I wasn't friends with Steve, I would sort of be in the loser club. I would have be Billy No Mates uh, and so on and so forth. So I was frightened of that. So I stayed friends with Steve. And I did generally like him. I thought he was he's all right. But he had a streak in him that wasn't very wasn't very nice, really. He was quite sort of sometimes what he would do is he would tease me or other people and then say, Oh, I'm only joking, sort of thing, and that would go on for quite a while. So anyway, I used to walk to school and back with him. Anyway, on some of the days, we used to walk back and to from school with his older brother, Ryan. And uh, this young girl that had uh, joined the school, who was always also in my church youth group, would walk, with, uh, would walk home as well on the same sort of route. And so me and Steve and Ryan, we were walking back from school one day, and uh, we... Uh, Ryan and Steve were taking the mickey out of this girl and I, I was a coward at the time really I didn't do anything about it I didn't speak up and say don't do that um, I was very frightened I was frightened of their rejection um, and you've got to understand at this time I didn't feel that I was a Christian at this time I felt I feel that my becoming close to Christ and being a Christian was at the age of 22 during a, a Don Double meeting. I'll, I'll come on to that a bit later. So on this way, walk home from school, we, we weren't very nice. And I have to put myself in that that same category of not being very nice to her, because I stood by and I let these these people take the piss, M Mickey, sorry, out of her. Um, and that wasn't very nice. So, of course, the next Sunday at youth group, of course, it was the talk of everything, how I would had been a right sod, as it were, uh, and hadn't practiced what I preached, um, essentially I'd be found out, and um, that was probably a good thing in a way. So what does this ha all have to do with unforgiveness? Well, the particular girl that was hurt by me didn't like me at the time, but over time she found it in her heart to forgive me, and we are actually, we're actually Facebook friends for quite some time after that, you know, I didn't, I didn't know her, know her, or wasn't a, a close friend, but she, she learned to forgive me, even though she had been the one that had been directly affected through my cowardice and my lack of moral integrity. So then there were other girls uh, and guys that were part of the youth group that heard all of this and they, they were outraged because I'd hurt their friend and they 
couldn't forgive me, and even now I don't think some of them can forgive me. Now this is this is very uh, a particular point because unforgiveness can be towards somebody that hasn't hurt you directly, but hurts someone you care about. So you you can be an unforgiveness towards somebody and not think not think that you are. So unforgiveness, this is how unforgiveness can happen. So you can be in um, unforgiveness towards someone simply because they belong to a group of people that you don't like. For example, people who don't like Christians and are unforgiveness towards Christians because Christians might have hurt them in the past are going to be in unforgiveness towards me, even though they don't know me. Why? Because I'm a Christian. I, I'm part of that group that hurt their feel feelings or whatever or, or hurt them. So even now, and um, I had a terrible time in the youth group because, and I'm talking about church youth group, because obviously everybody ignored me, nobody wanted to like me. I was, um, yeah, I mean, I really shouldn't have gone, really. I shouldn't have, have gone every week, really. It was a waste of time, to be honest. But um, I, do, I do forgive those people for being like that. But I don't think they were so, so sure to forgive me or wanted to forgive me. And um, this was further evidenced by the fact that um, towards the end of my time at that church, I wanted to join the, the 18 to 25 group. And I remember asking the leaders of the group, you know, whether I could join, which is really stupid. I should have just turned up because normally on a group like that, you don't have to ask to join. But I, I did ask to join out of politeness, not thinking any, you know, anything would, you know, I'd be turned down or whatever. I thought, you know, it's free access to the group. And then um, they turn around to me and say, "Well, I don't, they don't want you in the, you know, you're, you're too." The words that they used were, they feel, felt I was too spiritual, which is, well, it's a load of bunkum, really. Um, that wasn't true. They didn't want me there. They didn't want me dragging down their group. So there was even unforgiveness then when these people were in like 18 to 25, their loss, you know, their their situation, if that's the way they want to be, that's fine. So, yeah, I just wanted to share about unforgiveness. Now, I also wanted to share, and this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't share about Corrie Ten Boom. Corrie Ten Boom was a lady that hid a load of Jews in a secret room in Holland in a house away from the Nazis. Now, Corrie Ten Boon and her sister Betsy were arrested by the Nazis and sent to a concentration camp. During that time at the concentration camp, Betsy uh, got ill and died. She was terribly treated by the guards, uh, stripped naked, beaten, whatever, and she died of illness and what, whatnot. Now, when the camp got li liberated and Corrie Ten Boon started a ministry, she was at a function somewhere and she saw one of the German guards across the room who had tortured and beaten her sister. And of course, you can imagine what she felt like, can't you? She wanted to beat the living day daylights out of this individual. And she had to ask the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, please just help me not to react this way, not to, be, not to do that. And the Holy Spirit gave her the strength. So there is a way out, you know, for people who are unforgiveness towards others, there is a way out. You know, the Holy Spirit can help you not to be in unforgiveness towards other people. You know, you don't need to need to be in that position. So, yeah, I mean, to cut a long story short, after my time of being, being a hypocrite at the age of 14 to sort of 16, I, um, I started to feel rather worthless um, at the age of 19. I dated a girl for a month and made a pig's ear of it. And I remember after that relationship had ended, if you can call it that, I remember lying on my bed and um, my mum saying, what's wrong, John? And I just said to her, look, I, I feel completely empty. I feel completely useless, worthless. I just feel so hollow, mum. That's what I said to her. And um, it was, I, I felt like that for a few years after that, to the age of about 21. And then I, I was at my church, the same church, and a visiting speaker called Don Dabble spoke, and he spoke about Jesus being Lord of your life. And I remember being very heavily stirred to respond to that and to, to say in front of everybody who thought I had been saved and ever since that, in fact, Jesus wasn't Lord of my life. You know, he wasn't King and Lord. That was quite a difficult thing to do, but doing it... Um, 
reap dividends, you know, it, it, things were just never the same again. I'm not saying I was perfect after that, of course not, but things changed and, and things were more authentic and um, my relationship with God was more authentic uh, and I was able to, after that, I was able to leave that church and go to a church for people with learning difficulties. And I haven't got learning difficulties myself, but I helped out there for um, six years and um, yeah, they were, they were six wonderful years there. I really learned who I was. Uh, where I was going on, I, w I would say I didn't really start learning who I was until I was 21, 22. I was just in no man's land. To be honest with you, if I could take my adolescenthood, that's my time age between 13 and say 18, 19, and rip it out of my life, I probably would do. Because for me personally, I thought the whole, th those years were pointless and they, they were full of pain. But I'm glad I'm not in the place of God to be able to do that because obviously God wanted those years in my life and they have shaped me to be the person I am today and that, that's not a bad thing. So anyway, that's um, the, the sort of morals of, of forgiveness and unforgiveness. Thank you for watching.